Hello, everybody. It's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News, coming to you here with an update on the Brandon Jones story. Got a little drool on me. Don't worry about that. Uh, no paternity care. We got to do it live, folks. Uh, Brandon went on Clayton Eckert's podcast, uh, received, you know, Good, decent amount of criticism for sharing his story. Some people even saying, why did it take him two years to say he never cheated in the first place? Which isn't exactly true. We'll get into the timeline. Don't let a good story be disturbed by the facts. Now, to be f fair, we don't have facts. We have what Brandon says. We have what Serene has said. But now we have Serene's brother coming out and sharing some more information here. So the last video I made just now, we talked about how he said she threw the ring at him. They broke up. They moved on. Well, now we have the updates from uh, Serene's brother. I believe he was featured on this season, right? Was he on? He was on. Um, what? I'm, now I'm trying to remember. Did we ever? We met him somehow, right? It, it must have been at Clayton's hometown. Did Serene date Clayton? I mean, you, we got to go so far back. Who even knows anymore at this point? So either way, we'll have what Russell has to say um, uh, and kind of give some updates. Because I can't play the full video for you, you know, you can go check it out on YouTube. I'll post a link below. But I did have two clips I wanted to share that I have not previously shared. The first one was about them having their fights recorded. Uh, this is interesting because what Russell, uh, excuse me, what her brother is going to say here is that he has the receipts. So what was said on the tapes and... Does it have to deal with cheating? Did uh, he admit to it? Like all, all these questions we don't have answers to, but he says he has the receipts. Here's what Brandon Jones had to say. Yeah, man, it's just like this abuse over and over. And then her showing me these 80 videos of secretly recorded fights. And it went from, it went from, oh, I'm just going to show the therapist this so that we could work on these together. And ju I'm just recording our fights so we could work on these together to, oh, these are just for you. And I'm just going to show you and you alone to, uh, oh, now, like, if you say anything against me, I'm going to release these videos. And now, I don't know anyone who records videos of them fighting other than Johnny Depp and Amber Heard. They're the only couple I can literally think of where they did something similar. And, like, look, you should always fight in the least aggressive way possible. Does this make sense? You should literally never raise your voice. You should try to come at, because when you get your emotions involved, it ruins whatever argument you might've been trying to make. So if we just rewind to last week with Devin and Jen Tran, you know, he's denying that he ever had a restraining order, but she, his ex, not Jen, his ex is saying, there's a hole in the wall from you throwing an iPhone into the wall. That's not good. Uh, put that on the list of things you shouldn't do when you're in a fight. A fight should be listening, communicating, going very slow, this and that. If she recorded them, you know, I don't know, having very abusive conversations and just super vitriolic, you know, while that was done in the privacy of their rooms, I mean, I think at this point, it's like you shouldn't use that to threaten somebody else. But at the same time, I can understand somebody recording someone else if they're like really foul in the way that they argue. I can understand that. But do you weaponize that? It becomes the question. And my, my greater thought is this. If Brandon said or did something that was so bad in the recordings, why would he ever have gone on Clayton's podcast? So I don't think there's too much there just from that perspective. So like, that's why I just lived in fear, dude. And, and I fucking, dude, on top of that, I'm dealing processing. And then January comes and the producer comes out with their podcast. And I'm like, the producer comes out with her podcast. This is Lana, Alana Noel. The producer, Alana Noel, comes out with a podcast where she throws her ex under the bus. Her ex was Serene's producer. I hear is that I Serene think. the whole time has been sending fucking gym photos and bikini photos and telling this her boyfriend, this producer on the show, who was my best friend, that... Oh yeah, the chemistry has been there the whole time and I'm going out to see him with her and we're on his boat and me and her are in an argument. I'm like, yo, that was a little weird between you and this individual, right? And then to hear that they had the same argument saying like, hey, it's clear that Serene obviously has feelings for you and stuff. And now I have to process this on my own because I don't know who to tell and like what to do. And 
she's calling me when the podcast comes out saying like, oh, it's it's none of it's true. It's none of it's true. And then I'm seeing the text messages of like from what she was saying to the text messages like, oh, yeah, no, it's true. It's like, you know how much anger I had, you know? So Brandon says he has anger probably because he was accused of cheating on serene and most people still believe he did cheat on serene he's saying that's not what happened now i've had people say waiting almost two years to say you didn't cheat not my place to accept or deny outside serene but i still think it's weird he got with serene who looked like a clone of michelle who he just broke up with bachelor in paradise aside it wouldn't have worked out morning dave and I, look i love comments because you get to see what the general perspective is the general perspective is that that he's never talked about this, that he just bit his tongue. But that's not true. He actually talked about this almost a year ago. Here's what he had to say, and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna reread what I already wrote, what I already because I already uh, I already talked about this 11 months ago. Uh, this was after Serene went on off the vine, I believe. Caitlin Bristow's podcast. In light of recent events that have transpired over the last few days, I've needed to take a break, a beat to reflect and process my emotions surrounding this delicate matter that is intimate and personal to me. Now that I've had a moment to digest, I want to clear the air and respond with my truth. And by the way, this is the slowest moving argument ever because they broke up. It was a while before anything was said. She finally shared her truth. He responded. He said, I understand there's a narrative circulating, circulating that falsely paints my character. So I wanted to provide some light to this situation. Situation. To be transparent before leaving to Texas, which is where he was caught dancing with someone, uh, my partner, Serene, and I, Brandon, made the difficult choice to end our relationship and go our separate ways. So we've had a lot of questions as, well, did they end the engagement, but they were still dating? Was there a gray area? 11 months ago, Brandon says, no gray area. Now, you might not believe this, you might believe her, you might believe him. I don't know what to believe, really. But if there was any evidence to prove that they were still together, I think she would have shared that or it would have been leaked, right? But he says, no, we broke up. As this was a public relationship, we both decided to hold off on sharing the news until we mutually felt it was time. So we shared the news with family and friends. Where I have taken fault and responsibility is a conversation we shared the day before I left, speaking on doing long distance. So... I, I, this is where I would ask him to elaborate. Are you saying you led her on to believe you guys were still together? Unfortunately, during this time of private separation coming back from Austin, a video came to light that while harmless made my ex-partner upset. After speaking with her one-on-one -on -one and navigating our new normal, she felt that I had cheated and wanted to make this news known. For the record, in the early days of our official breakup, I shared one dance with a woman, nothing else, just a single dance before leaving with my friends. Now, Nothing else has emerged, right? We have the video here. This is the dance. So there, are, nothing else has emerged other than someone took a video of them right here. Her net heads to the side. You know, who the who the hell knows what's going on, right? That's the video. That's it. That's the Zabruta film, as it were. So again, we're trying our best here, folks. You know, a, a lot of things become a he said, she said, and that's all this is. But at least we have timestamps of covering the story for. Uh, you know, well, well into over a year ago. And it, and by the way, it doesn't mean that reality Steve's reporting was wrong, that a source said that they were officially together. He's saying they weren't. And I don't know if there's, you would think with all of the social media downloaded and in receipts, you'd think that would be kept if he was lying. And again, this is just where I'm coming from. Maybe the proof comes out by the time I upload this video. If Brandon Jones is lying about being broken up, you would think there would be some sort of timestamp, photo, uh, text message shared between each other that would show that they were actually together. He's saying right here, 11 months ago, that she was rewriting the story and that they were actually broken up. She, uh, For the record, in the early days of our official breakup, I shared one dance. Completely understanding where her valid feelings were coming from, I took ownership regarding her feelings and my actions as we had made amends and agreed to put this behind us. I was surprised to learn very publicly that there are still lingering issues between us that need to be resolved. <laughs> I'd say. Out of profound respect and love for the time we shared together, I want to move forward peacefully, ultimately hoping to preserve our memories and form a relationship. Thank you all for taking the time to read this. I appreciate you and I am hoping for a fresh start now that I've shared the story through my lens. Love, Brandon. So it's interesting, right? because he shared this 11 months ago 
And as he shared the Clayton video yesterday, Serene posted this. Have y'all heard this song? It's really good. And it's called The Smallest Man Who Ever Lived. And then she did a crowd size reference to the size of his BMAC or whatever, you know. Uh, so look, um, she's allowed to say whatever the heck she wants, you know, with, with regards to not lying. Of course, you can't defame somebody, although you could, you just have to prove it, right? And he's allowed to share his side. But a lot of people are saying, why would he share his side when she's remained quiet? And You know, for the most part, she's remained quiet, but she did go on off the vine. So my, here's my guess. Let me tell you my guess. My guess is he's sick of being labeled as a cheater when he knows deep down he didn't cheat. It's again, very similar to a Tino issue where Tino, you know, took the sword for cheating on Rachel Recchia, says what he did was wrong, but then in hindsight says, you know what, we weren't really together. We had taken a break. You know, it's like, well, what is it? And, and I, I don't know what it is. Anybody in the comment section who's not closely related to them also doesn't know what the heck went down, right? So you hear about this producer who, by the way, we covered, it was very, it was very, you know what, maybe we didn't cover it. It was so interesting to hear what Alana Noel had to say about her ex because he, her ex never denied any of the claims. There was claims that this producer hooked up with a different uh, Bachelor in Paradise cast member. And I guess he was doing, um, either meth or cracked. I'm not, I'm not kidding guys. It was a wild podcast that this producer had and, and no one, no one, no one refuted what she had to say publicly. Um, I guess Serene, if I remember correctly, had spoken to, you know, I think Alana Noel didn't want to throw Serene under the bus because they didn't have a bad thing there, but because it was Alana Noel's ex-boyfriend, she had to be able to tell the story by naming names. That was her excuse. Is it I went and did a podcast that next month and I was just angry, man. I was, I was angry. I acted out of emotion. I just, the podcast never released because I couldn't allow that. But just like, I was, I was upset. Release the podcast. So he does a podcast and it goes so sideways. He says, you know what? You can't air that. I'm sure that podcast host was so annoyed. I wonder who it was. I wonder whose podcast he did. You know, I took this fucking gut punch for her. I took all this abuse from her. And I took I took day in and day out, everyone just like hating on me in my DMs. And anything that I posted, it would be a comment of, you piece of shit, you cheated, you cheated, this, that. And my family's taking this too. Any, any picture, any post, any comment, my family would get comments of that. My friends would get comments of that. Again, another example why it's the audience that causes the real strife. Like this relationship's over, right? It's over. They they should be able to both move on, but it's the audience that is sort of weaponized by what side they want to take. Again, this is why the Clayton Eckerd, Susie Evans breakup was the best and healthiest breakup we've ever seen in Bachelor Nation. They went on a podcast together. They shared enough of their story to satiate their audience, and it didn't lead to a he said, she said. So all we can say at this point is he is saying he didn't cheat, even though he shouldn't have been dancing a week after they broke up. But he said, well, I didn't cheat. He said, she's threatened me with, but with releasing all of these... Um, you know, videos of us fighting. And he's saying she was being abusive. Now, uh, the claims of abuse go both ways. So um, we've got some thoughts from what other people have said. Jill uh, from the Bachelor franchise said this, Clayton, I know you have been wrongly accused by multiple women in the past. I believe that you are well-intentioned your effort to support and bring awareness to men's mental health. However, you are now al allowing for the speculation of a good person who I witnessed suffer. I know you are, and by the way, so many typos here. I know you are privy to some of that suffering and I'm shocked and disappointed that your platform would be used in this way. I always hate it when people say they're disappointed in somebody else because it's like, look, you have to really break this down. Let's leave Clayton out of this. Yes, Clayton has suffered through multiple reckless scandals that he really had nothing. There was no reason for him to be a part of them. You know, they were just sort of like, he was the victim by all means. If Brandon went through a toxic breakup with Serene, is he supposed to let 
the narrative be that he's the bad guy? Like as an audience, is he supposed to fall on that sword in front of the audience? Um, or, you know, what I've noticed is what people do is they eventually, you know, as the dust settles, they realize that just because they stayed quiet or did whatever, that it didn't give them the results of like any sort of favorability. And you might say, well, why should he have favorability? Well, because if the, if it's, and I say if, because I, we really don't know, but if it's true that he didn't cheat, he shouldn't be labeled as a cheater. Now, if you want to release the fights and call it toxic and abusive and all these other things, fine. But this is where I kind of get held on the specifics. Like, well, if he didn't cheat, don't call him a cheater because that is something that follows you and he's going to now meet a girl he's going to like and she's going to Google him and find this out. And it's like, look, we need to have space for all of us to learn and grow and be better. Um, you know what I found so interesting was this comment. Someone said, listen to the podcast this morning while working. He threw her under the bus for sure and made some wild claims about her behavior towards him. He also took accountability, but I believe the goal of this podcast was to taint the perception people have of her as the one who did no wrong in his relationship. She went on Caitlin's podcast a while back too, so he hasn't really had a chance to say much. My personal take, they both sound like they were awful to each other, and what they showed us was an illusion of a happy relationship. They are better off apart, and they are both equally to blame. Clayton didn't take sides. He just hosted the dude, and I guess I can understand his bias given uh, Brandon the platform because they are ultimately close friends behind the scenes. I'm now curious if Serene will release the 80 videos she's been threatening to release. The show attracts mostly broken and toxic pe people, to be honest, and actually turns them worse. So here's my question. If they are both equally to blame and you had to poll a thousand random people in Bachelor Nation, do you think it would be 50-50 as to who's the bad guy? So I'm not here to defend Brandon. This is the first we're really hearing his side of the story. What will happen next is either Serene will share receipts that prove him wrong or she won't talk at all and it'll kind of be the end of it. Uh, if she has a story that doesn't line up with his, we'll be here to cover it. I can't, I don't know what else to say. So Jill posted that. Clayton responded to Jill because by the way, in Jill's comment, she left no room for what the conversation was supposed to be about, which is Brandon Jones sharing his truth. That's what the conversation was supposed to be about. I don't think it was supposed to be about slamming Serene. You do have to be careful when you tell a story like this to make sure that you're not jockeying to play the victim. A lot of people said, oh, Brandon's just wanting to play the victim. Well, maybe he's just trying to not be called a cheater. You know, like at the very least, I'm sure he would settle on not, you know, winning everyone back, but just having facts be facts. So Clayton says, hey, Jill, I'm providing a platform for men to speak their truth. Whether they're right or wrong isn't for me to decipher. I'm simply trying to encourage men to speak up about their struggles and for others to hear them and hopefully begin to understand why men think the way that they do. I don't necessarily share the viewpoints of my guests. I just let them voice their feelings. Of course, I hope they are telling the truth, but that's beyond my control. I do feel that both sides of the story should be out there. And my understanding is the other side of the story has already been shared. So now both narratives are out there and it's up to people to decide if they want to form a judgment on it or take sides. Again, that's beyond my control. The one thing I would say if it exists, if you're on Brandon's team and you have any proof that you didn't cheat, I think you would have already shared it. So I think that's what's going to be hard. Now, look, if they're going through a fight and they live together, they're not going to have receipts. They're, they're not, they're going to be talking in person, you know? So it's really, it really does come down to like a tough, like he said, she said. And I think in a, he said, she said, when we don't know the truth, as far as the timeline of the breakup, we should be a little more careful to not pick sides. Here's what her brother had to say. Clayton, for someone who advocates so much for mental health awareness, I figured you, of all people, wouldn't facilitate this type of public display of delusion, considering your brother witnessed some of it himself and even called you to tell you to have someone check on her. Again, we have no... Curious? Yes. But we have no idea what the hell this references. So then Candace, some random person, says, how do you know what goes on behind closed doors? This is his truth not realizing this is Serene's brother. And he goes, because there were times I was behind them with her. This man has personally apologized to me and asked for forgiveness for his abuse to her. I have receipts. And again, it's one of those things. I, 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 you know, I'm in no place to say share the receipts. But if Brandon said something that was lying and not true, I would say, yeah, you owe it to yourself and to defending your sister to share that. 
Uh, someone commented this. Clayton, you're not a licensed professional. He needs a therapist, not a podcast. Brandon, you were still together when you cheated in Austin. As a close friend of Serene's back then, everyone knew you were still engaged. Let the toxic relationship die to get over that valley. Very interesting. So this is coming from someone who claims to be Serene's friend. So again, th this is a solid somebody's lying type of deal. Now, could it have been, and I think here, if I had to guess, my guess is they had a hard breakup. Serene leaves to go back to Oklahoma and they have a conversation as toxic as this relationship seems to be where Brandon says, let's just see if long distance can heal the wounds or whatever. You know what I mean? That's my guess. And it's interpreted in a way where they're going to try to work this out. And that's why she sees it as cheating. In which case it's pretty gray area. But if, if she believes it's a relationship, then it's fair to say she believes it's also cheating. But in most cases, cheating's very obvious. We were officially together. You banged this other person. It's obvious. If it's a case where they're breaking up, you just need to be really good at defining what your relationship is so that this doesn't happen. Russell responded, uh, Russell Mania, Serene's brother, responded to Jill and said, I think Clayton means well. I really do. But I also think he wouldn't have appreciated himself being lied on publicly a year after his situation finally died down. She tried to help Brandon look as decent as possible for his sake. I know what happened because I saw a lot of it myself when he didn't always know I could see or hear. Thank you for this comment. So very interesting stuff. Again, if you, if you had to ask me to bet on what the hell went down, I wouldn't. Because I have no idea. This is just him sharing his side. For those criticizing Clayton for saying, you should not ha platform a guy who's who you know is lying or this or that, I, I side with Clayton here that, look, if there's a situation where Bra Brandon's gaslighting and the receipts prove something otherwise, it'll surface. If Brandon's not telling the truth, this is the dumbest thing in the world to do to reopen all of this. He should have taken the exit and, you know, whatever. But in some cases, when we say, oh, so-and-so is rewriting the story, um, you know, a year later, we know that that's not necessarily true because I just showed you the video where a year ago he made the claims that he never cheated. So at least his story hasn't changed in that respect. Um, my guess is we're not going to hear from Serene uh, because my guess is there's more ugliness that would come out if they started sharing receipts. Um, I could be wrong and I'll, he I'll be here to cover it. I hope she's okay and I hope he's okay. I don't put one of their lives ahead of the other. Uh, the relationship's messy and the only way they could have avoided this if they stuck to their joint statement and if they didn't let the sort of um, divides form with the Bachelor Nation fandom, that's really what it comes down to. Let me know your thoughts. I got a podcast coming out next. I'll have all of your entertainment news in one place. It's called The Rush Hour. Scan that QR code if you want to listen for free. We'll see you then. Bye, everybody.